So yesterday we had a most important part of the sky. I said my very first achievement over here was isolate the spray pen. So um, learning how to isolate correctly is a real hand. So that experience is for you now. So I will subtract the 14. So that x squared is more alone. And then I would divide the 2, so that x squared is more alone, which is like multiplication of 1. And then we have x squared equals 28. And now um, the spray pen is isolated. Sometimes the square term is like in parentheses. Like this is the square term here because all of everything, the expression is squared. But this time it's just x squared. Okay, now we're going to hit the square root. A square root will help us figure out what x is because it'll cancel out the little 2. The square root and then the power of 2 completely cancel each other out. And we have x equals plus or minus the square root of 28. So the second thing we talked about yesterday is when we're solving by square root, we need a plus or a minus sign. The negative, um, when it gets squared, turns positive. So we have to think this is either positive or it could be negative, which is really what creates the two sides of a parabola, the fact that this could be positive or negative. So um, when I put this in my calculator, if you have the sheet out there, just like, your, your square root button is, wait, I'm on mute, is um, second x squared. Go ahead and put it in your calculator, see what your calculator does. 28 um, square root is a decimal, but your calculator is already doing something different than decimals, probably. Did anybody's calculators talk about 2 square root 7, right? Okay, that's a, that's a good thing. The reason your calculator is not giving you a decimal is because mathematicians don't want this written as a decimal. They don't want to compromise um, this square root and round it. They want it in perfect exact form. So we, we practice it a lot um, in math class. So this is called simplest radical form. So we're going to focus for a little while. I mean, when we go to a word problem, we'll probably look at decimals so we can conceptualize it. But for now, we want to um, talk about no decimals. We want to utilize simplest, simplest radical form. You have to prove that you understand what the calculator is doing. So how does your calculator go from 28 to 2 square root 7? You have to show that word. What they're doing is looking for perfect square factors. So here's my list um, of numbers that I think most of you all have memorized. All of the perfect squares. 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared. 28 is not on the list. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the list for a number that 28 will divide by. Does 28 divide by 16? It doesn't. Does 28 divide by 9? No, it doesn't. Does 28 divide by 4? Yes, it does. So I'm going to acknowledge that there's a perfect square factor here. And I'm going to rewrite 28 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. And that's going to make this a more simple radical. The square root of 4, I'm going to go ahead and do. The square root of 4 is 2. This is what your calculator did to pop out 2 square root of 7. So your best answer for full credit is x is plus or minus 2 times the square root of 7.
Not a decimal. But what we call the simple, simple radical form. Does anybody remember doing that ever in geometry or anywhere? Oh, good. First page. Good people, I guess. Just practice your skills. So just a little bit more. Maybe as we do it, um, you might remember it. You might not. No big deal. So anyway, um, your calculator will do it for you. But you need to show what your calculator did. In college algebra, they won't let you use calculators for part of this. In ACE math, you're allowed to use calculator for everything. So let's go to number two. Number two, I think I want to go to do because of the fast thing. Coming through here. Is that working back? Okay, okay, number two. Three fourths. X plus one squared equals ten. I see vertex line here. I see an A value. I see an H value. If I subtract the ten, I get a K value. You see pretty good. It's just something that I can graph over. Okay, so um, this whole thing is squared. So in order to isolate this, I want to get rid of this fraction in one move. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So you flip that fraction. Four thirds times three and a quarter is twelve over twelve. So that's one. So I can't do that. Yeah, it doesn't fit in. So boom, it's gone. And then I have um x plus one squared equals this is like ten times four over one times three. 40 over 3, good. And then um, now our squared terms isolated, so we will square root both sides. When you have the parentheses, the whole expression squared, and you square root it, you can then drop the parentheses. So the square root and the 2 are gone. We no longer need the parentheses. I have x plus 1 is plus or minus. As soon as I write the radical, I write the plus or minus sign. Plus or minus the square root of 40 over 3. Plus or minus the square root of 3. And then one last thing, I have to get x alone minus the 1. But um, I, can't, I can't minus the 1 from this because it's in a, in a square root bar. So it's takes a minute to get used to, but you put that number in front of the plus or minus. It's a negative 1, and it's a positive or negative square root of 40 over 3. And since we don't want decimals, we're not going to divide that. We're not going to square root it. We're just going to leave it just like that. A mix? What is it? I wouldn't mind it. Um, um, on standardized test, though, they don't let you do that. Like if it says type in, and they want you to type in like that, they would read it as 131 over 3. So, but this thing went past it. Oh, 13 over 1 third. I got it. What did you want to go to? Anyway, I'll leave it like that. You're welcome to do that too. All right, who's got a question about this one? So what you're getting used to is how strange the answers look. And you might be like, why don't I just make this a decimal and um, make this a decimal, 13.3, square root it, add negative 1. But um, we're really trying to preserve the whole number, so we're going to keep it in the radical form for that whole thing. Anybody? 
Okay, I'm gonna get out of Actually, in a second, I just wanna move it. I wish there was an outlet for it. There is. What do these answers uh, represent? Anybody have an answer to the three book I gave away that we talked about two days ago? And the word we talked about the other day, um, beauty. So he was going to say self sufficient and beauty. Okay, so the reason, so chapter one, chapter two, we dropped a lot of regular numbers. It was easier. It was like positive two, negative three, negative four. What is this? Right? What is this? What is this on the graph? If you want to know what it is, when the sun is at that point, two, three, or seven, the one above the enter that's in the right hand corner, or the top right hand corner, whatever you want to call it, corner, this is um, the equivalent of 5.29. Okay, and the truth is, when it comes to parabolas in the real world, uh, when it comes to machinery, we're probably going to either get our or um, the gravity of any object. Most of the time, it's just conjecture. We are completely lacking who um, who was an engineer who did this in math, and he was like, um, "Why do you want to do all these problems with like weird numbers? Like everything you do that like ends up being a constant for this thing, everything you know is going to be x amount." Um, so all of our problems that land exactly on perfect points on a graph, the translation of that's not really going to come out in the real world. So when you picture these weird numbers, even though we keep it in perfect relative terms, it's okay to understand the graph a little more. This is just saying um, 5.29 delta E minus 5.29 delta, um, which is probably more accurate because all the stuff that we say in the real world, it's not going to land perfectly on a graph. It's not every, you know, oh, this is going to land perfectly on all these things. Yeah, there's so many strange stuff in there. So these weird answers are actually um, more likely to be what we are missing on the graph. <laughs> we decided to start. All right, now let's look at the problem from yesterday. And we can uh, ask about the more difficult ones. Six and six and seven and eight, or you can ask about eleven, twelve, thirteen, or fourteen. I can zoom in on any of these. Yeah, maybe I'll skip downgrade to number eight. I did utilize the rest of the assignment. I'm going to um, just to make sure we get it to where we need to go. Okay, here's the thing. So, um, collect your x squares together and just subtract one first, and you're left with three bits. Then um, I use the reciprocal like I did over there. I flip the two bits to five over six on both sides. And that made ten over two, which is five. Five is x squared. X squared is five, whatever. And then you don't actually start five. You just use the radical there. Plus or minus two over ten.
So I'm 17, and Teresa, our strange together, we subtract. We make an exponent square there. When you go to three, you, you actually can't still remember the negative. Well, you can. And we will. So we're going to call that a marble number. So now we're just going to say this is a marble in the square bracket. So as soon as you have um, the chance to steal it, take your variables isolated. But it happens to be equal to a negative, so now we're just going to call that number three seven. So it's nothing scary, come back. So that helps flush the E too much. Let's go ahead and get to the next one. Three digits, right? All right, specifically for the verbal questions, so I'll help you in a minute. Um, that I can add the 4, and I can actually do 4 plus 7 and 4 minus 7 and get two regular numbers out. Now, had this been a 40, for instance, 40 dozen square root, it would be 4 plus or minus the square root of 40. So if the square root was not one of these numbers, you're going to see it's still going to sound super fucking weird. So it's all about whether or not Like square root, this square root, this square root, this square root. So these all have regular answers. And then right here, all of a sudden, oh no, she makes the decimal. So the Pokemon is weird facts that make the decimal. Pokemon. Let's get the fourth really quick one. One answer? Yeah, it's half. Fast photo. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, if you forget the plus and minus sign, um, you're looking at, you know, half the problem, but is it half the full, you know, full understanding of full comprehension of two answers before they're able to see it for you? Absolutely. And our thumb is only on one side. You ready to move on? Yeah. I actually, I'm going to do two more problems. Any more questions about these? All right, I have three more problems for you to try um, just to see, like, okay, do I understand this? So, 
Um, you don't have to do all three, I think you should, but if that's not where you're at today, pick one. Pick two and see if you can do it. Let's do three from scratch. Scratch. And three I should be with you. We just did bell work. You tried your assignment. Let's try these now. These are X check out before we move on. People next to you. When and where? What do you mean? From Belwert? I think I erased it. You did it. All right, number one here. First thing I would do here is add six. And I would get 2x squared equals negative 6. Divide by 2. And I would get x squared is negative 3. Put the square root. And then right then in there, an alert goes off in my mind. Don't do it. No real solution. All right, so that one's a trick. It's right up there thinking you're going through everything just fine. 
somehow right in the middle there, your brain has to think, wait a minute, I'm not okay with this. I'm squaring a negative. There's no real solution. Please stop there. Don't go any further. No real solution is the answer. Yes. Nice. You don't do positive, negative until you've isolated. So before you do positive and negative, you move, like you're setting up the problem. You take the six to the other side, you divide by two. Now the problem is ready to begin. Now that you've isolated, here's where you do positive and negative, but you don't do positive and negative um, until the radical works. This radical doesn't work. So technically I could have written like this, a plus or minus outside here, but it's still no real solution. Okay, so there's nothing in front or behind the squared term, so I'll go right to the square root bar. The square root bar is so cool. Cancels out the two. I no longer need parentheses. X minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 128. I'm curious about this number 128. Sophie, did you try to square root 128 in your calculator? What did it give you? A square root 2. What? How did it do it? It's not a decimal. It shows up as 8 square root 2. So there must be something that 128 divides by that will result in an 8. So I'm going to look. At these numbers, which one of these square roots would be 8? 64. So I'm going to go, wait, does 128 divide by 64? Oh, that's how the calculator did it. The calculator rewrote 128 as 64 times 2. It's a very smart calculator. Um, you have to understand that. So technically, I should um, test you without a calculator on this very one scale. You're supposed to show you can do that. So now I can square root this and it's 8 square root 2. My problem is now x minus 5 is plus or minus 8 square root 2. It's not done yet. i got one more thing to do. And the plus 5 over. The plus 5 ends up right in front of the plus or minus sign. My answer is a positive 5 plus 8 square root 2 or minus 8 square root 2. I can't really do 5 plus 8 because that's not technically an 8. It's 8 times the square root of 2, which is like 8 times 1.4 or something. So... I don't know. Um, so when I see 128, I have to think, does it divide by any of these numbers to put it in simplest form? And it turns out 128 divides by 64. Well, my problem is to get it to five hours. So let me show you a different example real quick, Jared. Let's say I had to square root 72. Does 72 divide by 49? No, it doesn't. Does 72 divide by 36? It does. 72 is 36 times 2. So I would rewrite it. And 72 is the same as 6 square root 2. Simplest radical form. We do that a lot in like the next chapter. There's a whole chapter on radicals. 
This is just a little side note here. All right, next one. Table 14, subtraction property of equality. Multiply by the reciprocal. Thank you, reciprocal. You're actually saving me a lot of work. You, you work so well, reciprocal. Canceling fractions, well done. That's 18 over two. X squared equals nine. Hit the square root. X is plus or minus three. <clears throat> So, let's see um, your opinion. Hold up fingers. One, if you think number one's the hardest, most difficult question. Two, if you think that's the most difficult question. Three, if you think number three is the most difficult question. Ready to go? Twos and threes across the board. Good. Um, I agree. I think two is the most difficult. Three has a fraction, which is difficult. But what I really want to alert you to is on a test, um, you'll, you'll forget this. And it's always kind of sad. You'll forget, oh, I can't square root a negative, no real solution. Even on like the SAT, they'll, they'll pull something like this. So make sure that you put an alert and highlight it and make it a big deal for yourself that when you square root a negative, it's no real solution. So we don't forget the easier one. Here's the problem. It says solve. What did the book do from this step to this step? It just says put in standard form. Write in standard form. What makes this more standard than this step? The A, the B, or C. You guys, the problem has to be set in quarter zero. Make yourself a little note. So right after that, the book doesn't say, oh, it's standard form because it equals zero. It's saying, hey, this is standard form. So um, they subtracted the 45 to make it equal zero. Then it says factor. Your book is assuming you, you know how to factor. Factoring is just a number riddle. Um, to factor this, you look for numbers that will multiply to 45. And add to four. Because um, this is writing the expression. It's the same expression written in two different ways. And you know how when you FOIL, you do x times x, x squared, x times 5, 5x, five negative 9 times x, and then finally negative 9 times 5 would be negative 45. When you factor, you try to figure that pattern out to rewrite a problem. So when I look at... Um, a being 1, B being negative 4, and C being negative 5. To factor, I like to use a little table. I find numbers that will multiply to negative 45 and will add to whatever's in the middle, negative 4. You want numbers that will multiply to the C value and add to the B value. So I'm going to multiplies to negative 45. 
There's one thousand forty thousand. Two, there's forty thousand divided by two, and there's one thousand divided by two. Yeah. There's forty thousand divided by three. Which is forty thousand divided by three. There's forty five divided by four. No. There's forty five divided by five. It's five times negative nine. I think that's right. That's everything that forty five divides by. So this goes on to the division problem. And you're gonna try to add them together and to see which one will combine to be the two value. This last group jumps out. Yeah. 5 minus 9, that's negative 4. So I'm going to add these back up. 5 minus 9 is negative 4. So um, because these two factors combine to create that middle number, I know these are the numbers that I use to write and factor from. Sorry. So um, to write and factor from, you take the numbers that work, you use two sets of parentheses, you put the x in, and then you put the numbers in that you take. It was a positive 5 and a negative 9. Now look, the book wrote the minus 9 and then the positive 5. It doesn't matter what order you do it. This is correct. This is correct. It all works out to be the same thing. One last step is to solve these little guys. So I'm going to do x plus 5 equals 0. I solve these little things, you see what I mean? And I get x equals negative 5. And I get x equals 1. And those are x-intercepts. So, um, I think that's easier than drafting to find x-intercepts. And I definitely think that's easier than doing a comprehension number 2. Because these are integers and number 2 is somewhat complicated method. But um, it's all the same concept. Whether you're drafting for x-intercepts, you're reading for x-intercepts, or factoring for x-intercepts, it's all the same thing. The directions are going to say find a zero. Zeros are x-intercepts. Just another group, another word for group. So. Today we solved this one here. It's on page 191. Numbers 39 to 44. So you have 16 pieces of triangle here. Um, I'll go over them tomorrow. So you do your math. Find the numbers. And I'll go over them tomorrow.